that's the whole cart. You can probably hear the sound of the extractor fan. Uh, that's the hut with the smouldering, smoky knife. Uh, the whole cut in that piece, and then the stairs shoved into place. And uh, it's, it's taken a good while to get that hole right to fit the staircase and make it look like it's spiralling up. And there's holes I don't want, like where my finger goes in there, that's going to have to be uh, chopped up with filler. You can see. Uh, where there were little gaps in the stairs that I had to fill. It's very strange working with a black material and a white filler uh, because when you're working with clay you really want a consistent um, mix, uh, sorry, consistent colour uh, because the light is actually quite deceptive and those white pieces obviously look much more prominent uh, than they're really than they really are. Uh, just looking around for a little, little figure. Just have a tiny bit more work to do on this. Working, thinking, of, just using him as a guide to think where he would be on what step, uh, allowing for the base, or rather ignoring the base. I'm not going to actually have this as a playable area. And thinking where he would bang his head. So I can see that I just got to make that part of the roof there a little bit higher if it was going to be viable for people to come down that hidden staircase. This is the process here. I haven't got blocks big enough to fill all four quarters. So I take one of those blocks, usually the biggest one I've got left, and then I carve it down with the hot knife causing this wreckage here, which is giving a sort of interesting mathematical problem. Um, I've got, every time I cut a block down, I cut maybe three, four, five, six pieces off it. So I've got more and more pieces of the foam that they're getting ever smaller. And then when the piece has been cut and shaped, walking backwards and forwards between where I'm cutting and the actual model to get the, 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 the shape right, and then hollow it out to keep light down. And then it's only an approximate fit. It'll take lots of bits being added in and then lots of filler. But then slowly I'm building up the shape of the rock underneath. And it's taking about three quarters of an hour to carve each piece. Now, while those pieces are drying uh, with the, the wonderful grip adhesive, um, I was sitting in the thinking chair, thinking about uh, the tower. Still need to, to come up with some ideas on how I'm going to do it. Uh, it's big. Part of it's going to be below the base, uh, which is maybe the foundation. I'm beginning to think I, I might be able to miss that off, so I might be able to take it take it down in height a little bit because. I think it would be completely enclosed in the in the rock base. Uh, but something needs to go around this. This is only going to be the template, remember. So a, a tube of thin card, perhaps, uh, and then something stuck on the outside to be uh, either, either bricks or stones. Now, you can do that with thinly sliced foam. You can do it with card recent interesting suggestion which looked quite effective was to do it with um, the uh, some mache card that they make egg, bo egg boxes out of. You need quite a lot of egg boxes to get the flat bit and cut out the, the tiles but they, they can be moistened and they will bend. The, the difficulty with making uh, it look good if we're going for a reasonable degree of, of realism, not saying this is a magical tower where the hickledy pickledy bricks are held together by the forces of arcane magic. Um, the problem is that bricks aren't... Uh, blocks and bricks for circles aren't, re aren't regular, they're, they're sort of that shape. And even though I'm going to be making something very, very tiny, if I don't take that into account, 
the, 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 the gaps, and you see there's a lot of the towers that people kind of make, the, the gaps between the bricks are sort of V shapes, and they wouldn't be like that because they would, they would, they would be cut to take that into account. Quite hard to avoid that. Something that came out of the, the flood situation was I uh, had to reprint off my picture of my Irish, early medieval Irish tower. And uh, that was good because it actually made me look at it again and actually notice that there are those, those rings in four places on the way up. So I can build my tower in, in sections taking rings to support it. So even though it's going to be very lightweight, so it's going to be made out of foam or thin card, I've got my, my uh, rigid uh, cross pieces that are going to go in and I can make it more rigid inside in various ways. And then this came up on the Tabletop Crafters Guild today. This is a, a model by, look him up on there, Tab Tabletop Tar Crafters Guild on YouTube. And this gentleman is called Soren Ian Sorensen. Um, and that's just beautiful. He's got Anglo-Saxon long and short work, which is what that is down there, and infill. And how, how he's got the ir irregular bricks to still fill up the space. I don't know, there's a bit of mathematics or something going on there, which I haven't quite figured out. What I thought I would do it with is this. I'm buying more stuff on, on eBay. This is EVA foam, and uh, I, I, you, you get it in um, shops often sold in A4 size. It's sold as, uh, for some reason, uh, kids' art foam. I don't know who these people are who decide what sort of art materials and art techniques are for kids and what are for adults, I don't know. The sheet materials could be sent in three different ways, couldn't they? Uh, two different ways. They could be sent either rolled or um, flat, but this individual seems to have taken for some reason put each sheet of of uh, foam in an individual plastic mailing sack the three of them inside the outer mailing sack and neither rolled them nor had them flat but sort of roughly concertinaed them and i imagine for many applications that would make it absolutely useless <coughs> I don't know if it's going to be any good. Um, I need to start cutting it up. Maybe I can, I wonder if I cut it into strips and wrap it around the tube and then cut my vertical brick marks with a, with a, uh, a scalpel, whether or not they will open up in a way that I like or whether or not they'll look like that ugly V shape. Or perhaps I need to put it on a cutting mat and make my cuts with the blade at a slight angle so that my um, bricks are going to interlock. Perhaps it won't work at all. Perhaps I'll have to use this um, to be actually be the, uh, the, the inner tube to which the bricks are stuck onto on the, on the surface. So lots of experimenting. Find out what adhesives work with it. Find out whether or not you can actually mark it with a with a biro, whether or not that will be sufficient. More ideas you have, more ideas you get. But it always takes time to test them out. Now look at this, when I made that last clip, I hadn't really thought of just uh, drawing the stonework onto this foam, because I've never worked with this foam before. And I just I was actually thinking out loud as I spoke to camera in the last clip about uh, methods and just it just popped into my head actually as I was filming that maybe I could just draw the brickwork on and I'm just using a uh, what was a, a white gel pen which has run out of ink um, and I've, I've left this a few days and it's it's holding the impression they haven't sprung open so I'm going to do a little bit more testing that is a very small corner of a very let's just see if I can try to show you that just just that little little area there is what I've done and this huge shape sheet of a3 and I've got three of these sheets and that's and then they'd have to be painted that's probably achievable let's say a job to do 
over a few evenings of sitting in front of the television, I think, with a, a board and this on my lap. It'd be quite therapeutic, knitting type activity. And this has potential. So that's that painted. Uh, you might think it's funny to paint stone in flesh tone acrylic, but I happen to have that bottle. And uh, I think I can get more of it because I've got three sheets like that to paint up. It's going to take hours. Done that quite quickly and roughly. I could have spent more time on it, but I'm not going to be able to spend hundreds of hours painting up the whole thing. So I have to do a, a method. And that's just a, just a base layer, several uh, layers of darkening washes and eventually a, a strengthening coat of the Mod Podge will uh, harden that up. Uh, this and I'm going to use that little piece for the uh, the wall of the broken cesspit so I'm going to get to test out the whole technique the washes and uh, some generally griming it up see what it looks like uh, in case it doesn't work do that as a little test before I invest the time in doing the entire sheets and the whole tower now here's interesting, this uh, piece of wall that's going to be the the wall of a cesspit is going to actually be the only place in the model where the top of a stone wall is going to be shown. So it's going to have to be I think at least two, two pieces of EVA foam thick. I'm going to have to glue that together and uh, DM Scotty on the DM's Craft YouTube channel has a little video about what is the best glue and he says it's this styro glue because it sticks all sorts of things together it's intended to stick foam together uh, that is to say it's extended it's expected to stick um, XPS and EPS foam together. It's the solid types, not these flexible types. So I tried it and that's had more than 24 hours and it actually had weight on it as well and when I tested it it just came straight apart. So it's a great glue for solid foams and for all sorts of other things. It's useless for EVA flexible foam. I'm going to have to find something else. Uh, probably try the Mod Podge. It would probably be all right for that um, for that thing because it's not under any real pressure or strain. But I think I'm going to try and see what see what the Mod Podge does when you actually use it as a glue. And then I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to sort of make some little nicks and grooves in the top and decide whether or not I'm happy with two layers or whether I want three layers. It turns out that the best uh, stuff to glue EVA foam with is contact adhesive, contact cement it's sometimes called. And that has actually given me that's actually given me quite a, a strong joint and it's interesting because Contact adhesive actually melts XPS foam. That's a little blob of contact adhesive on there, just to prove it, uh, and it it melts in. So you first thing you do when you're working with XPS or EPS foam is put your contact adhesive right out of the way, so you're not going to use it. But it's the ideal thing to glue EVA foam better than that, which glues other stuff. Here you can see that's just the, that's the broken septic tank which I'm working on and uh, mucking about with all th three types of glue there, sticking that together. And I've just roughed out the tower. Those are the three pieces of uh, EVA no, yes, EVA flexible foam that's going to be wound, wound round probably a paper tube which will go around the cardboard tube as a former. And I'm finally getting some sort of impression of what the overall finished thing's going to look like. 
It's quite tall. I was trying not to make it so tall that it would be impossible to transport, but oh well, making it's the important thing. Worry about how to transport it later. Ten days have passed, which is enough time for me to notice that that last piece of video was sideways. Sorry about that. And uh, it's coming on. It's been quite fun to do these, but sometimes I've just had to put on one or two pieces at a time and let them uh, dry in, in place before I've been able to stick more on. Working with the grab adhesive is, is quite tricky because it's uh, it's not water-based or anything. It sticks all over your fingers and you can't wash it up, wash it off, sticking these pieces on. It's basically a case of getting crouching down on my knees and working from the underneath upwards. There's still a few places I need to fix. You've seen the overflowing cesspit there's the stairs worked in on the other side and what I'm doing at the moment is is just refining where there are sections like this where these these nice lines that look like strata they suddenly meet something like that I don't, I don't really want that to look like a sort of volcanic intrusion um, I want to I need to sculpt this a little bit more to match those and then working with a filler and finding the the, the, the filler is uh, this is this is still the uh, grab adhesive this grab adhesive but later on I'll use filler it needs to have structural strength and as much lightness as I retain but that being white on the black as I've said before is rather difficult so at a later stage uh, I'll have to uh, undercoat it with black acrylic just so I can see where it looks right and where it where it looks wrong, and then I'll have to add more filler. But it's coming on, and meanwhile, in between uh, doing that crouching neck twisting work, I'm uh, carrying on texturing these sheets of ABA, and that's had probably two or three hours, and you can see how much more. I've got to do quite a lot. It's not bad. It's a sitting down in front of the television or li listening to a podcast task. Another few days have passed when I've not been able to do any work on this. But I, I have spent the odd spare hour when I'm too tired to do anything else working on the uh, drawing the bricks but the roughing out of the rock base is done and um, I'm quite pleased with it so I'm going to start on the groundwork now just sh show you that uh, something before I take these uh, roughed out blocks off I've got a big gap for some reason on that uh, area, that side of the ginnel. I'll show you how that's relevant in a moment. One big lesson learned is I wish I'd have constructed this part upside down. It would have been so much easier than being on my knees all the time working uh, from the underneath. Something I learned years ago when reading a book about constructing model railways as this tip, don't start with a flat base. Almost everybody who makes a model railway starts with a, a flat base until they've perhaps got experience and then they don't. And once they once they become more expert in it, they often build a, a sort of lattice work of table legs and things and then they start building different layers. Um, because if you if you start with a flat base, you're always struggling to get the natural landscape. But I needed to 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 do it um, in in this case. I needed a uh, like a, a a baseline for for my thinking as much as anything else. But now I need to break that up. I need to make this look like a a, a more natural ground surface because the one thing really major thing that's different between medieval buildings and model build, uh, modern buildings is 
uh, that these days you can get a, a ground mover in and you can start with a completely level base into which you put nice deep foundations. We couldn't do that in the early Middle Ages, is it's just manpower and you, you, you strip the soil off, but you do often, uh, if, you, if you've got any, if you can get down to the, to the rock underneath, that's why towns are often built on, on hills as well as the defensive reason, um, you, you have to cope with the undulation in the rock, unless you're the king or the, the mayor or the wealth, wealthiest merchant in the, in the city when you can afford the manpower to have the ground level leveled. So I'm going to uh, try and now destroy this flat surface. Now, you, you notice that that gap I had, um, I know I've got some sort of problem going on there. And though I want the whole thing to look irregular and crazy, it's starting, if I try to hold this absolutely uh, level, it's actually starting to slope a little bit too much. So I know that I can, I can build the ground up a little bit on this side. Um, and I'll, I'll just go kind of freestyle, make it as, as irregular as I can with uh, layers of the foam board uh, and then start building the, 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 the building on top of that um, without thinking at this stage because the original builders of this just had to build it on the piece of ground um, that they came across.